Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. As always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. It has been kind of busy today. Uh, this is kind of cray-cray because it's Super Bowl Sunday. I don't see anything about the game. I literally don't see anything going on about the game right at the moment. What I'm hearing about, of course, is them boys, them Dallas Cowboys. And here's where we've got a couple of different dynamics that are going on, and as well as the Eagles. The Eagles are allowing Hassan Reddick to seek a trade. Um, which is kind of surprising because he was one of their best pass rushers and things out there. He has, um, I think, about a 14 or a $15 million cap hit for next year. And, um, yeah, he had 11 sacks last season. Interesting take to see what his value will be. So I don't think that they would be wanting to trade with the Cowboys. But then again, the Cowboys made a trade with the San Francisco 49ers, another team that you wouldn't expect that would want to make a trade with the Cowboys. But since they blew everybody else's offer out the water, you can see why they made the deal. So now the next question you have to ask is, will the Cowboys be actually all in um, this season? We've heard Jerry Jones basically say we're going all in the hell with the cap and yada, 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 because, you know, building for the future, we've been building for the future for 29 years and we ain't one jack. So in most people's equation, the Dak Prescott contract number of $59 million. Now understand how we got here with the 59 million because of the Cowboys mismanagement of other contracts and things. They immediately signed him to a contract extension and immediately restructured it. So the first year of this contract was $17 million. The second year of this contract was $19 million. The third year was twenty-six, which is great because it wasn't Dak Prescott's contract that held the Cowboys back from getting other personnel. You can dare say that the first four years of Dak Prescott's contract, we should have been big-time players in free agency because the first three years was under a million dollars each year. And we did nothing. Let me be clear here. We did nothing with the money. So some people, and, you know, shout out to, to you know, pe people can have difference of opinions. Uh, my man DMV, shout out to DMV. I was listening to his video this morning. He is on the team Don't Extend Dak Prescott. And his reason being is the Cowboys won't do anything with the money other than re-sign their own players. Well, the problem with doing that is we're $19 million over the cap and we're losing 16 free agents. If you do absolutely nothing, you got to cut more players to get under the cap. You're at some point going to draft some other players that you're going to have to pay, be it that's probably like 7 or $8 million is what it'll be cap money wise And you're going to need to fill in a full roster. So you have to get the money from somewhere. I get it. People aren't crazy about the idea of Dak Prescott and everything else, and they look and they want to blame him. But I don't see too many options out there. I mean, there is Russell Wilson, who will be a free agent, but that won't be any cheaper. Um, Kirk Cousins will be out there, and I'm sure that's not going to be much cheaper either. And as I look around the NFL right now, and I see, like, Daniel Jones get the $40 million bag, and the Giants, yeah, do you think that that was a, a good, good, okay, I guess not. But what are their other options? Um, you can look at Justin Herbert, who got 52 last year, and you look at it and say, look at the season that they had. That didn't work out too good. You can talk about Trevor Lawrence, who was the number one pick in the draft, who was, I believe, third in turnovers last year, and they didn't exactly do well going down the stretch there either. They, at one point, had a chance to be the number one seed in the AFC and <laughs> didn't make the playoffs. So there's not a lot of options. So if you say we're not going to pay him, you're going to basically make the team even worse. I know the idea of re-signing some of our own players doesn't sound good, but it's doing something, and you have to do at least the minimum. You have to have a 53-man roster and your um, practice squad guys. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is by restructuring some contracts. So this is what was said with – uh, uh, earlier today, uh, about an hour ago, 
on the contract extension possibilities for Dak. The Dallas Cowboys have a real actual deadline for Dak Prescott as they begin work on his contract extension that should make him once again one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL. He carries for next season a almost $60 million cap number. The Cowboys are going to want to go into free agency. They're going to want to have maneuverability, want to be able to sign guys. The only way to do that is to lower that cap number. That's why the expectation is the Cowboys will do a deal in some form or fashion with Dak Prescott before free agency. He can essentially not be tagged after the season, heading into the final year of his deal, Rich. So a deal basically must be done for Dallas. The Dallas Cowboys have a real action. Oops, wrong wrong one. Okay, so here's the scenarios. You can you can restructure and throw some of that money right now in the void year. You could do that. You could do that. But you're only going to amount to about $20 million, which is the break-even point. You could go through with Diggs' contract, restructure, with Zach Martin's restructure, with D Law's restructure. Um, there's some the ones in there you could restructure and get money. I've pointed out before if the Cowboys wanted to, they can get Dak Prescott. Um, well, forget forget the extension for Dak. You could do that and get yourself about thirty million dollars, but you do and, and also getting C D Lamb's deal done will actually give you some cap relief for the first year. You could do these things and maybe end up with about twenty million dollars of money to spend on your own free agents as well as bringing anybody else in but it doesn't really give you a lot of room if you're trying to get somebody else and the other problem with that is you can do that but if you do not get a deal done with Dak before the end of the year then he can just walk away and you get absolutely positively nothing most people think that you know oh my god if Dak Prescott's not the quarterback of the Cowboys you know, he's screwed. Well, you're not going to get so much publicity, but I guarantee you'll get a whole lot more love. And having the ability to pick the team that you want to go to, and trust me, there are a lot of teams out there that would love to get Dak Prescott. Be a, like Matthew Stafford going to the Rams. He could look and say, there's a team that I can get on and we can make a run for a Super Bowl. So at the moment, I say the Cowboys need Dak more than Dak needs the Cowboys. We'll see what happens, but it's kind of a no-brainer that they need to get this thing done. If you get this done and you get yourself about $40 million in cap relief, if you restructure those other deals, if you get C.D. Lamb's bag to him, you get Micah Parsons tied up, you could literally still have about $40 million of money to work on re-signing your guys and going out and getting two or three really good lights-out players. And ultimately, that's what all-in looks like. All right, good people. We're getting ready for the uh, Super Bowl. Um, I I think David Wiley's still coming. Uh, DMV will be here. E2 Blue will be here. We'll have, of course, my man Game Time Brian will be live streaming in and doing a dual simulcast. Uh, live stream together um and we will be of course watching the super bowl where the cowboys aren't in 